Recently I've been doing various fitness tests to see how fit and healthy this 40 year old body is. And in this video, I'm gonna investigate flexibility. And if it's as important as we think it is, I'm also gonna test how flexible I am. There are nine exercises that are simple to do. So I'm hoping you guys will do them as well as they can reveal some really interesting things about the body. And the last one is an absolute corker. The tests work from the ground up. So let's start on the ankles. For the tests, you'll need a tape measure, a yoga block or shoe box, and a camera. And using a phone is just fine. And for this video, I enlisted the help of my friend Sam Bacon, who is an expert when it comes to body movement. Stand facing a wall with one foot in front of the other. Begin with your toes touching the wall, then bend at the ankle and touch your knee to the wall. Move your foot back a tiny bit and then do the same. And what we're looking for is the maximum distance that we can get from the wall, still touching the knee to the wall without the heel coming off the ground. To make sure the heels stay on the floor, it can be helpful to have one of these stretchy bands and you put it under your foot and then if your heel starts to lift up, then the band pings away. But it's not necessary if you haven't got one of these. So that was it, yeah? When you've got out as far as you can, measure the distance from the big toe to the wall and record your result. And take a picture from the side as well. Then do the same on the other side. And you may find that one side is different to the other. Come on, LT. Go! <laughs> and my results on this were really not very good. For my right ankle, I got 13 and a half centimetres. And for my left ankle, I got 10.2 centimetres. That was my right, that was my left. And ideally, there should be a maximum difference of 10% at each side. And I know it's not critical, but I have got a 25% difference from left to right. And that's causing some other issues in my body, which I'll explain more about later in the video. And my stiff left ankle comes from an injury from when I was 24. That was 16 years ago and I was doing step aerobics. I mean, who even does step aerobics anyway? And there's so much scar tissue around the joint that it doesn't move properly. But there are some things I'd like to try to get it loosened up. So I'll be making a video about that for this channel. And all of the exercises that I explain in the video are available in a downloadable PDF, which I've linked in the description. Next up is testing the hips by doing the 90-90. Sit on the floor, put one leg in front of the other at 90 degrees and the other leg to the side at 90 degrees. If 90 degrees is too much, you can bring the legs in and reduce the angle. Sit as tall as you can with your weight evenly distributed between both sides and see how it feels. And then take a picture from the front. Then swap sides. And take another picture. Again, you may find that one side is easier than the other. That doesn't feel quite as nice. Yeah. By looking at the pictures, you may see an imbalance with you being able to sit up straighter on one side compared to the other. Now, I know these aren't the typical kind of stretches like reaching down and touching your toes, or let's see if we can drop down and do the splits, that kind of thing. In a certain sense, it was almost a fib to call this flexibility testing because these are actually mobility tests and mobility testing can reveal more about what's going on in the body and be more useful. Moving up to the spine, the next exercise is the cat-cow. Go on all fours and have your hands under your shoulders and your knees under your hips. Tuck your tailbone and your chin, creating a curve through your spine. Take a picture if you can. And a quick tip if you're doing this by yourself, you can make a video of yourself doing the exercises. Then when you watch it back, pause at the position you want and take a screenshot. That way you can compare the results for each side and for when you do your retest. Now do the opposite, lift the tailbone and the chin, creating an opposite curve in the spine. Then reverse back and do this a few times, slowly and see how it feels. Are there any tight areas? What you're looking for with this is having an even curve throughout the spine in each direction. And this will highlight any tight areas in the back. Your curvature is pretty consistent, is yeah? So you've got a lot of curvature throughout your whole spine. The next exercise is still focusing on the spine and this time it's the twist. Sit down, ideally with your hips at the same height as your knees. Place a yoga block, and you can also use a shoe box or something similar between your knees. Cross your arms over your chest and then twist to one side. Keeping your hips facing forward and your knees in line. And this is why the box is there because you'll see if your knees shift this means you're moving at your hips rather than just your spine. 
Go as far as you can and if you can get a picture. Then do the same from the other side. And guess what? One side may be different from the other. And I was surprised with my result. Oh no! Shut up! <laughs> yeah. The first feel way more limited that way. Yeah. yeah! Twisting to the left was so different from twisting to the right. I couldn't go as far and it felt much more difficult. And this combined with my tight left ankle and my tight left hip, it's all kind of got this ripple effect with one affecting the other, which if you've seen my strength testing video, it explains why I've got a hip shift to the right when I do a squat. So although it's not a major issue, it would be really nice to free up those areas, get my body back in balance and get it moving a bit nicer. Next, we're moving on to the shoulders and oh my, are you gonna love this one? Maybe. I've always been amazed with how bad I am at this and I'm not sure what it's called, so I'm gonna call it hands behind the back. Put the right arm up and the left arm down. Then reach round and put your hands behind your back. Some people can touch hands. How is that even possible? It's important in these stretches not to strain. Just go to where you can feel a small stretch and definitely don't push it. And with this one, try not to stick your ribs out so you can get your hands closer together. Keep your ribs tucked in. Get a picture or use the video pause and screenshot trick and then do the other side. And look how bad I am at the other side. I've always been like this and I've never been able to improve it. But to be honest, I've never really tried. From these two pictures, you can see what a massive difference I've got between each side. It's way more than 10% and I'd really like to get it balanced out a bit. And the reason I'm struggling so much here is demonstrated in the next exercise. This is internal rotation of the shoulder and for this, lay on the floor. Set the camera up on the floor at the side in line with your rib cage. And then bend the elbow at 90 degrees with your palm facing towards your feet. And then move your forearm down as far as you can without lifting your shoulder and your back off the floor. And keeping your hand and your wrist in line with your arm. Measure the distance from your hand to the floor. Get a picture and then do the same on the other side. I thought my left side was going to be way worse. This one's going to be terrible. Due to two shoulder rotator cuff injuries in the past. Mm, not as bad as I thought. Mm. But to my surprise, the left was better than the right. Wow, yeah. that's a huge difference. And shoulder health is so important. And in this modern world, we don't really use our shoulder like we ought to. Humans in the past would have climbed and reached, dragged and lifted, but these days, Many of us, myself included, are in this position most of the day. It's good to use the shoulders, in fact, all of the joints in our body, just like they were designed to be used, which is why it's good fun to try these exercises. And if you're tempted to give them a go, let me know in the comments. And if you discover something interesting, then I, and I'm sure other viewers, would be really interested to read about it. We've got three more exercises and we've got one more for the shoulders. But before that, I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, FlexiSpot. FlexiSpot make electric standing desks and ergonomic chairs for office and work from home. And I've got their E8 standing desk, which has presets, so it automatically adjusts to my standing height and my sitting height. I've also got their active seating chair, which is super cool because it's wobbly. I use it like a bar stool, which feels much better for my hip flexors. I've wanted this set up for years and now I've got it, it's even better than I thought. I enjoy coming to work because I'm comfortable and it encourages me to move around during the day so I'm not in one position for hours at a time. So if you've been thinking about buying a standing desk, then I've linked to FlexiSpot in the description. Let's get back to the shoulders. Stand with your back against the wall. Lift your arms to your side with the back of your hands and elbows touching the wall. Keep your hands, elbows and most importantly your back touching the wall and slowly lift your arms as high as you can, trying to keep your shoulders down away from your ears. The ideal is being able to completely straighten the arms above the head. And it's easy to want to flare the chest out to give some extra height, but that's cheating. So keep the back flat to the wall. Take a picture from the front and maybe from the side, just to make sure you're doing it right. And this is way harder than it looks. Come on. Come on. That's a bit Good. But it's also a lovely exercise to do after work to mobilise the shoulders and the back. Technically, I would probably prioritise internal rotation rather yeah. than external. 
Because if your shoulder can't internally rotate, that means it's stuck to your shoulder blade. So the entire shoulder girdle is going to move as one, rather than being able to like dissociate between the two movements. This video is part of a series investigating my health and fitness. I've done cardio tests, strength testing, and had a blood analysis. So be sure to watch the other videos in this series because they all fit together. And I'll be retesting everything, including the exercises in this video, in 12 months to see what improvements I can make to this 40 year old body. And the last exercise before the super mega one is testing our wrists. The wrist is an often forgotten about joint with most exercises and stretches focusing on larger joints. But having strong mobile wrists can play an important part in certain exercises and day-to-day -day life. Stand facing a wall, fingers pointing down, and then slowly move the arms up to get a greater flex. And don't push this one. This is just about seeing that the wrists and the fingers have good flex and that each side is even. My wrists are in fairly good condition because I've done yoga and body weight stuff for several years. But I remember taking a break once and then coming back and down dog was so uncomfortable. Being flexible is all well and good, but actually how useful is it to be able to do the splits or to be able to chuck your leg behind your head, apart from it being a cool party trick. We don't really need these positions in real life. I may be able to do the splits, but check out the difference in each side of my body in some of these exercises. These imbalances are causing quite a few issues for me. What could be considered more important than flexibility is having good range of motion in the joints and balance in the body. And on that note, I've saved the best till last. It's the all singing, all dancing one, the one that reveals a lot of stuff and it's everything combined, it's the overhead squat. And it's only a guess, but I'm not sure there's very many people in the world that will be able to get in the perfect position for this. So give it a try and let me know how you get on. But remember, this isn't about getting the perfect position. This is about moving the body, trying it out and giving it our best. Because we don't need to get the perfect position to get the benefits of this stuff. It's the doing it that counts. For the overhead squat, I used an app called Pliability to assess my position, but it can also be done without the app. I used it because it measures the angles of the joints and gives a rating out of 100. So let's see how I do. Film yourself doing this from the front and on both sides. If you want to use the app, I've added a link in the description, but this isn't sponsored by the way. Stand with your feet shoulder width apart, feet facing forward. Now bring your hands above your head with your palms facing each other trying to keep your arms straight. Now, squat down as far as you can without lifting your heels off the ground. Try and keep your head up and your chest up. Try and keep your arms straight and above your head if you can. How are you getting on? Breathe in and out. Please stand up and transition so your left side is now facing the camera. And then do it again, this time facing the side. Keep your chest up and maintain a good posture. Great. Now hold for a single breath. In. And out. We'll need your right side to face the camera. Oof. I mean, this is hard. And then repeat one more time on the other side. Keep your head in line with your spine. That is, that was so hard. How did you get on? If you didn't do it and you're just watching this video, come on, get up, just give it one try. Watch the video back and assess each body part. And even if you don't know what you're looking for, chances are you'll be able to see some things that you could improve and you would have likely have felt what you could improve as well. Five mobility issues detected. Got these scores here. A mobility issue in my right hip. Quite a big difference, 66 to 91. For the next 12 months, I'm gonna do 20 minutes of mobility and stretching a day. I'm gonna use the Pliability app because I wanna see if I can balance out my body. So I'll keep you posted on how I get on. Get the exercise sheet from the link in the description and let me know what exercises you're gonna try and how you get on.